All right, so here we are as of this morning, which was all the work I got done yesterday. The back side looks pretty cool, I think. Almost done there. On the left side is the power supply. It will blow out. Um, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of a foam uh, weather strip type thing between the case and the power supply so that there's no like baffle or you know kind of seals the channel um, and then I'll put one of those one of these grates on it that I just bought and uh, eventually once I get the machine running I think I'll turn or not maybe turn but I'll make an aluminum collar so that it doesn't look like weather stripping sitting there um, to fill in that gap instead but um, you can see Back here we got the e-stop switch and the remote e-stop jack is up front because I figured if it was facing out I'd be more inclined to make sure I had it available. Um, and the power main power switch is over there. I'll show you the front here. Now let's see if I can do it without making everybody motion sick. And there's the e-stop switch, the jack and the switch. Um, also you can see over here we've got each of the axes uh, plugs and then over here are all of the limit home limit and home switch jacks for the whole system um, and they all wire to these terminal strips so that every one of them every one of the limit switches is wired in series and then every home switch is powered by a shared 5 volt so I only had to use up one on the port, uh, one of the port, one of the pins on the breakout board, and you'll be able to see that here if I try very hard not to mess with people's equilibrium. All these yellow lines are the inputs, and the black one is the power. So there's one power over here for all of the e stops, and I've used one power over here for the home switch. It dawned on me later that I don't know if you'll be able to see it, I'll try to get close enough. There's a 5 volt power out of each in between each of these inputs or near each of these inputs um, I could actually wire up each individual home and get its own power pin it's six and one half dozen of the other it's fewer wires up here but then otherwise I need this bar to share the 5 volts so I'm kinda I haven't decided um, the way I've got it hooked up now leaves a lot of extra wire for me to change it around if I need to. Um, today what we're going to do is get this outlet wired up and I've split its power so that back here these two relays, there's two separate relay power um, options and I can control those through software. So what I plan to do is I split this so that one outlet can be controlled by one relay, the other outlet can be controlled by the other relay. Um, it's used primarily for turning on the router, perhaps dust collection. Um, for milling machines, they use it for coolant pumps. Um, maybe a, oh, I don't know what else I could possibly use it for. But that's today. Maybe tomorrow I'll think of some reason to use it. Um, but it's starting to look, you know, pretty pro looking. Um, I don't like some of the problems I've done, I've run into. Um, for example, that parallel that parallel port is pretty jagged. I tried to keep it smooth. It had, I had a little trouble getting it lined up just right. Um, but the cable plugs in right now, so it'll be all right. Um, eventually, what I'm sort of planning on is probably redoing this back panel once the CNC is done, once the machine is done and running and I can cut out a cleaner hole for the outlet and and get this moved over a little because I forgot there was a screw there you know some of those things that happen when you build stuff you know, the first time fabrication um, I'm pretty pleased with how few parts I've had to remake on this machine so far um, eventually I think on this one I'm just going to use the label maker that I've got and say XYZ um, home limit positive limit negative for each axis and the reason they're spaced the way they are is there's room here for three more axis uh, plugs and three more axis home limit and home and limit switches 
Um, I did it that way so that I could keep all of the home and limit switch wiring separate from all of these because these things get pulsed and can induce noise or so it's reputed that they can induce noise so I'm trying to keep that clean as best I can. Um, we'll see how big of a deal that is once it's actually running. Um, but yes, yeah, so here's where I was yesterday. I think we're at day 36 now. The wiring phase takes a very long time. Um, but anyway, that's where I'm starting out this morning. Hopefully today I'll get this grate made. Um, and then it'll be back to the machine to wire up all of the home uh, or all of the limit switches. Um, I ordered a set of um, what they call Hall Effect sensors, which is basically, it looks a little bit like a transistor that can tell when a magnet comes close. Um, they are reputed to be much more repeatable and accurate. There was a post on the thread, on my build thread about it. Um, they were only a buck seventy a piece, so I thought, well, what the heck, I'll give it a shot and see what happens. Um, but that's where we are and hopefully after today with all of the e-stop limit e-stop and limit switches in place things might get moving this weekend today hopefully it's possible the putting the getting the switches mounted the limit switches mounted is going to be a challenge it might take a little bit extra time but we'll give it a go so thanks for watching and there we are